Hi everyone and welcome back to the Happy Heart. I'm so glad that you guys came over today um, to check out this new recipe. I look like a hot mess. I have no makeup on, um, but I need to get dinner done and I really wanted to share this recipe with you. So just come along and I'll show it to you. The recipe comes from a girlfriend of mine, but it is amazing. It's just this really fresh lemony pasta and oh, it's so good. It's a staple in my house. And if my husband is around, I usually make some grilled chicken and uh, marinate it in that Montreal chicken seasoning from McCormick. Uh, and then I just cut it up and mix it all together. I am not a huge fan of just meat in general. And so I usually just make it like this. So I'll show you the way I make it. Um, I really like a lot of vegetables, so you'll see me put a little bit more than probably what normal people need. But it's just the way I like it, and it has been a staple in my house since she made it for me, and I'm really excited to be able to share it with you. This is an overview of everything that goes into this pasta salad. I usually put two boxes of these white button mushrooms because I really like them but the original recipe only calls for one and I also usually put two things of these grape tomatoes in but tonight I only had one but they're my favorites too. Uh, you need a little bit of olive oil and about a couple tablespoons of minced garlic. Also uh, I just use regular fettuccine noodles and you'll need two lemons and we use the juice and the skin of the lemon. A little thing of basil that you can get at Walmart or pretty much any grocery store. And a measuring cup to measure everything basically. You'll also need something to squeeze the lemons and so that is my juicer. And a microplane is really handy to get the skin off the lemon because you really want that lemon zest. And that is what makes this pasta just amazing, that fresh lemon juice and lemon zest. So this is just a quick overview of everything you'll need. You'll start by cutting up all the mushrooms and I usually cut them into either quarters or um, as I'm dicing them right here, I'm doing them a little bit thinner because these just happen to be kind of bigger mushrooms. But I usually just dice them into quarters because I like a thicker um, chunk of them. Also, people have asked me, like, you put the stem and everything in, you don't take it off? And that's what my girlfriend told me to do. So that's what I've been doing, and I know this was kind of a family favorite recipe in her house, and I think her grandmother used to make it, and she was Italian. So I feel like if it's gone through the test of that time, that I don't need to mess with it at all. And I don't notice any hardness in the stems at all. Then I will start by cutting my grape tomatoes up and I usually just cut them in half. Sometimes I cut them a little bit diagonal because it's easier for me. And I'll show you guys um, a close up here in just a second about how easy it is to cut these. So I just end up cutting them in half. I usually use a serrated knife and that seems to be a lot easier. And for some reason I kind of cut them on a diagonal almost and that seems to be a lot easier and I don't know why. I know there's lots of tricks to cutting up grape tomatoes and lots of people um, do it a couple different ways but this is just the easiest for me just doing it one at a time and it really doesn't seem to take up that much time. The other tip I have is I usually cut the tomatoes and the mushrooms on the same cutting board. I usually use these flexible plastic ones from Pampered Chef and I just love them. But I usually cut these two vegetables together on the same cutting board because you put them in the pan to cook at the same time and it's just a really easy way you can pick up the whole thing and put it in. Next you're going to turn your heat to medium-high 
And you're going to put olive oil in the bottom of your skillet pan. So as you can see, I put mine usually between a 6 and an 8. I put in about 1 to 2 tablespoons depending on how many vegetables. So because I put in more vegetables, I put in more olive oil as you can see. But if you're just doing one package of mushrooms and one package of tomatoes, you would probably only need one tablespoon of olive oil. Then I just stir them around and get all the vegetables coated at that point because I want them to kind of sit and simmer and cook. I will end up turning my heat down to um, just a little bit above low because I'm basically trying to steam these vegetables, especially those uh, mushrooms. A lot of the juice of the mushroom will come out and it'll make this really yummy, yummy sauce. So I usually turn the heat down and put my lid on and let them just sweat away. My particular skillet has a built-in opening right here as you can see, but if yours does not, leave your pan kind of tilted so some air gets into those vegetables. Next you want to zest both of the lemons and basically what you're doing is you're trying to get the skin off the lemon and there's tons of flavor in the skin of the lemon that I had no idea about for years and years and years but it really really makes a difference in this dish I can tell a lot and my tip for you guys is to get a fresher harder lemon because my lemons here were about a week old and they were really soft and it was hard to get the zest off. I really only got a few little flakes which is nothing. I usually get a really big pile of zest and this particular day of course when I'm filming for you it did not go very well. To use that little microplane um, it's just kind of like a mini grater so you can use a grater as well. I periodically stir the vegetables because I don't want them to burn at any point or get stuck on the bottom of that pan. And if I need to add more olive oil, I do, but usually uh, the water from the mushrooms has kind of come out and you don't need to add more olive oil. But this is what they look like in the cooking process, so you can see they're getting a little bit smaller. While the vegetables are cooking, they usually cook for about 30 minutes. I like them good and soft, so I cook them for about 30 minutes. But I get everything else done, and you'll see that I juice the lemon during this time, and I do the zest during this time. This is the way I've been juicing the lemons. I'm sure that there's a better way, but this is just the way that I have been doing it. And you're trying to get about a quarter cup of lemon juice. Usually I buy the concentrated lemon juice too and just keep it on hand in my refrigerator in case the lemons are not as juicy. But these were very juicy and like I told you they were a little bit overripe so they gave me lots of juice. And just watch out for the seeds. Next, you're going to add the basil, and you want to just pick all the leaves off of the stem, and that'll be easier for you to cut it. The, the trick to basil is that you want to kind of roll it up a little bit all together, almost like taco, and then you'll just run your knife down and make slices. So see how I'm kind of rolling it up? and you'll just make slices and that will get you kind of longer basil pieces and this basil really makes this pasta. 
this is what the basil will look like all cut up and this is what the zested lemon will look like although I told you guys that I didn't hardly get any because of those silly lemons next about halfway through the cooking process about 15 minutes in you want to add your garlic and I always just get this minced garlic um, already done and I just put in two teaspoons of it you'll see and if you use fresh garlic uh, you want to add two cloves and you want to add it halfway through the cooking process because apparently if you started it from the beginning the garlic would burn that's what my girlfriend told me a few times she made sure to explain that to me and she actually always uses fresh garlic and then I just put the lid back on this is what it looks like when it's pretty much all done so as you can see it all kind of shrunk down a lot and it just looks ooey gooey good this is the fettuccine pasta already cooked and you just cook it to your package directions and strain it. I usually put it back in the pot I made it in because it's easier. And then I put the mushroom and tomato garlic mixture right on top of it, all juices and all. Go ahead and add your basil on top of there as well. And you're going to put your lemon zest in if you had a lot, but you guys know that I didn't. And then you'll just add your lemon juice that you'll see me do here in a second. So you pour all that on top of there. And I do have a secret ingredient. It's a little bit of this crushed red pepper. And I think it calls for an eighth of a teaspoon, but I just do a few shakes and it really makes all the difference. Gives it a little bite. If you don't like spice though, I wouldn't put it in. I would omit it out but it really makes the pasta. At that point, then I just mix everything together. If you need to add more olive oil to kind of get it to mix better, then you can go ahead and do that, but I have never needed to. And make sure you just mix it really well because all those vegetables will fall to the bottom. Here is the best part. Get you a nice pasta bowl and just grab some of that pasta, put it right on the plate. And really you probably will have to pick through and get a lot of the vegetables out because they kind of just get down at the bottom and things like that. But I always make sure I pick plenty out for me because it's my favorite part. I usually serve this with a garlic toast or something like that. Today I had um, just an Italian bread with butter and you can see I couldn't help myself and I took a bite. But look at how good that pasta looks and all those vegetables in there. It is just a really refreshing pasta with all that lemon and you're just going to love it. This is definitely a crowd pleaser and even for those people that don't like vegetables, they'll love this. Okay guys, so that is it for this fun, easy um, pasta recipe. My kid loves this recipe. Um, every, I've made it for potlucks. I've made it just to bring to somebody for dinner. Everybody loves this recipe. So I'm really excited to see if you all make it and how you like it. Don't forget that you can add the protein, um, that usually you would add chicken or something like that to it. And if you're looking for any specific quantities or anything like that, that will be in the description box below. Um, I wish I had a link or something that I could give you guys, but literally my friend wrote it on a like a recipe card and gave it to me. And I want to say it's like with like her grandmother's recipes. I know though in life those are the best recipes, the ones that don't come from a link, that were handwritten, or they're from somebody, somebody to somebody's. You guys know what I'm talking about. Those are the best recipes. So thanks you guys and I will see you in my next brand new video. Um, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and those bell notifications. Bye.